Hi friends, so welcome to the new segment. So today we will be talking about something new, but it won't be totally different from uh, what we have seen already. So today I'm going to discuss about whirling of shafts. Whirling of shafts. Uh, I believe this is uh, one of those phenomena which we face in practical engineering problems very frequently. So here I have shown a steam turbine. So uh, here is the disc onto which blades are mounted. So what happens? These things will run at very high RPM. So let's say I have an eccentric mass because of some reason. Some reasons there is an eccentricity. Or the other way to put it is that if if I am having my geometric center, if there were no ex. Uh, if there were no errors or if there are, if everything went perfectly or as per the design if, if there uh, by manufacturing goes as expected if, if everything goes predicted then the mass center of this whole assembly will be uh, at the centroid but let's say due to some of the abnormalities or the, 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 due to some unforeseen reason we have a uh, some kind of Un, um, unbalanced mass uh, here or there see at uh, somewhere here then what will happen then due to centrifugal force there will be a definite amount of force that will be generated here as this rotates very high rpm at very high rpm so this shaft the, the shaft onto which this whole assembly is mounted it will try to bend Okay, so this behavior is called whirling. We will um, have a look at it in more detail. Okay, so that was just an introduction. Now we need to put things more systematically uh, so that the problem is quite trackable or solvable. So let's say this is my flexible shaft. The word flexible is very important. This is not a rigid shaft because in rigid shaft, we won't feel uh, if we assume that the shaft to be rigid then we won't uh, see some this kind of bending and all mm. so the shaft is assumed to be flexible that means effectively it has got stiffness mm. whenever we talk about flexible bodies there will be Young's modelers and all those stuff so there is a definite stiffness in the system okay now one few more few more assumptions before we uh, solve this problem or we set up the problem this shaft is assumed to be massless okay so it has a stiffness but it is massless but this disc this rotor has a definite mass so this rotor is having a mass little m and it is rotating if you look at you if you look at the from this side if you look from this side let's say then it is rotating in the counterclockwise direction with an angular velocity of omega the first thing to note here is that there are two motions here the one is a pretty obvious one this disc rotates about the point s that's what we require it's a functional requirement now due to the eccentricity or due to the unbalanced mass the CG of the system is no longer coinciding with the geometric center the CG of the disk is somewhere here let's say I will use my a different color to note it let's say my CG has shifted to here and I will call that point as C now that is shown with more clarity over here so now my center of mass is no longer at here it is shifted this side this way now what happens when it rotates it creates a central a centrifugal force as i explained before so due to that centrifugal force we are seeing a bending of the shaft like this and now what happens it is not going to stay as it is it is not going to stay as it is now the plane this particular plane which contains this bending shaft this plane which contains this bending shaft for the time being let's assume let's say this was initially the plane would have been like this vertical then after a while it may get rotated like this that means there are two motions in this system 
one is the rotation of the disc and the other is this shaft gets rotated with the bending with the it will bend and it will also get rotated about the bearing axis makes sense with this kind of a shape so that is called whirling so you clearly understand the difference there are two different motions in the system one is the motion of the disc or the rotor about this axis and the axis or this particular shaft itself rotate about the bearing axis in a deformed form in a bent form okay so that is called whirling now coming to this picture so the same picture this is a this is the view when we are looking from this side we are looking to from this side then see this was this is the geometric center but now your disc center disc center is actually moved by an amount given by x and y very important so now your disc center is here disc geometric center is here then this is the point where your actual cg is there your disc cg see this is the cg of disc alone because we have already assumed that my shaft doesn't have any mass so this is the disc cg alone now again why here is an omega t because the disc is rotating about this shaft so its orientation will change all the time so that's why we are calling it generally or we are referring to that inclination generally as omega t clear and the radial distance from the geometric center to the point to the to the to the cg is given as e so that is that can be called as the eccentricity now i think everything is well set up so theta